So students, continuing with our third unit, we'll be studying about front office budgeting. What are we going to learn about? Let's just understand. We are understanding the concept, knowing about front office budgeting. And we'll also learn about the different types of budgets. We'll also understand the various approaches for budgeting, the benefits and problems for budgeting, also concept of budgetary control. Let us just understand what budgeting means. This is your introduction. So it says budgeting is a very significant tool for any organization, for our uh, organization that's a hotel so that's irrespective of its size and nature if the need to survive in this modern world economy budget helps not only in controlling but also in increasing profits and better coordination throughout all departments so there are different operations different management that has to be taken care for a budget to be handled properly so if there is no planning, there will be no proper budgeting. Okay. There's a policy is prepared to requisite for planning and budgeting. And that's a detailed coordination planned statement. Okay. In short, budgeting is an estimate facilitating planning and coordination and controlling of any business or any organization. We'll now talk about front office budgeting and take up this topic. The budgets are based on the previous figures in consultation with the section heads and controller to achieve organization goals. Once approved, it is implemented and observations are recovered and matched with the set of standards to identify any deviation and it is to be corrected. So let us understand what in details are required for a forecasting or a budgeting to be taken place. Revenue forecasting and estimating expenses are another two functions of front office budgeting. And for the same purpose, a front office manager requires following information. The number of expected room arrivals, the number of expected room walk-ins and the number of expected room stayovers. Also, we need the number of expected room no-shows, the number of expected room cancellations, the number of expected room understates, number of expected room checkouts, and number of expected room overstays. So, all of these details are taken care by the night auditor or the duty manager who takes care of the night audit. These informations are collected and a night audit is run and the same information is passed on to the concerned departments or the heads wherein they will understand and estimate and make a budget for years to come or for the months to come wherein they can easily handle any major group reservations or normal FIT guests or, as well. So with this we get an understanding of what all do we need for a front office budgeting. We'll end our section with this. So section 1 for unit number 3 is finished. We'll move on to section 2. We'll understand the term budget. So the term budgeting is used for preparing budget and other procedures for planning, controlling, coordinating and understanding as a whole of any business undertaking. These can be prepared for an organization as a whole or in different parts or in different sections of any organization. So for example, a front office may have their own set of budgeting uh, formulas, budgeting uh, tactics. For f &B, they have a different set. For uh, housekeeping, they will have a different set. For production, food production, they will have a different set. Okay. So with this, uh, 
every minute details will be taken into consideration and once we take into con consideration all the minor details it will be easier and we'll have proper solutions to any problem that may arise budgeting also provides a base for measuring comparing controlling any performance and hence it is used for planning coordination and controlling purposes it may be in terms of say suppose a uh, time money units and etc so if we talk about front office specifically under the term budget it is considered that it will include forecasting of room revenue and estimating related expenses the budget is prepared in coordination with the accounts department under the supervision of a hotel general manager and controller now the controller could be uh, the rooms division manager or the front office manager or uh, the accounts team head anybody who is you know in charge of the position front office budgeting or the front office department as a whole of any hotel is responsible for the sale of rooms and is responsible around 70% of the total earning of the hotel that is why budget is budgeting is making an important activity of the department with this we finished on a general concept of front office budgeting we'll now talk about occupancy ratio this is your unit 3 section 3 now uh, what does occupancy ratio help the front office department with uh this is taken usually care by the night auditor or the duty manager who understands on uh, what basis has the front office done its performance and then this is passed on to other departments okay so let us understand what occupancy ratio holds it holds that occupancy percentage would be number of rooms occupied by the total number of room available for sale in 200 that's going to give you your occupancy percentage only then we'll be able to if we get this uh, percentage we'll be able to understand how the front office department is performing to calculate multiple occupancy percentage we'll have to divide number of rooms occupied by more than one guest by total um, number of rooms occupied into 100 with this we'll be able to get multiple occupancy percentage for a single occupancy percentage we'll have to divide number of single rooms occupied by the total number of single rooms available for sale into 100 for double occupancy percentage we'll have to divide number of double rooms occupied by the total number of double rooms available for sale into 100 similarly for triple occupancy percentage the number of tri triple rooms occupied by the total number of triple rooms available for sale in 200 with this we end a section 3 all of the uh, percentages all of the formulas that i have given you kindly note it down in your front office journal we shall now move on to our fourth section we shall start our fourth section with the essentials of a budget a budget is prepared for a definite future period prepared prior to a defined period of time it is a monetary and or it can also be a quantitative statement of a policy it is predetermined statement and its purpose is to attain an objective which has been given may be by the front office uh, manager or the rooms division manager or the general manager to the department as a whole now that we know the essentials of a budgeting there are certain you know aspects which is needed for a preparation of the same budget we'll have to have collection of a relevant data forecasting activities establishing organization chart budget committee 
preparing accounts record and framing a guideline for the whole budget to run smoothly. We'll also have to be very careful and aware of what task are we being given. We'll also have to prepare a budget manually then can we provide it in front of our heads. The submission of budgets should be prepared and discussed and the implementations which we are attaining has to be understood and then can it be implemented. Now as we already know there is a committee which takes care of the budget preparation. This committee will give us an upper hand. They will give us a green signal and then only each department will receive their budget and accordingly the shifts the whole of the season shall run. With this we end budget preparation. Chapter 4 is completed of your unit 3. We will move on to section number 5. On our fifth section of the third unit, we will understand how a budget is classified and the types of budget. Now let us understand, it is being divided into function, nature of expenditure, time, activity. Okay, these are the four sections in which a budget is mainly prepared. The four objectives. Now for functions, we will have to understand the first topic would be purchase budget. Then we have sales budget. Then there is production budget. Now production cost budget is divided into further categories which will include your material budget, labor budget, factory overhead budget, administrative overhead budget, Selling and distribution overhead budget, plant utilization budget, research and development budget, capital budgeting, cash budget. Now cash budget is further divided into three categories. One is receipt payment method, adjusted profit and loss method and then there is balance sheet method. For nature of expenditure, it is divided into fixed budget, flexible budgets, operating budgets. According to time, it is divided into a short period budget. Definitely, it will have a long period budget, current budget and rolling budgets. According to activities, it is divided into fixed budget or a single level budget and a flexible budget. Now, kindly note this diagram down in your front office journal. In the next part, I'll explain you in details about all of these types. Welcome to section number 6 of your unit 3, Budgeting. We'll talk about Budgeting according to functions now and the first subtopic would be purchase budget. Now what does this mean? Let's understand and go through the definition. The budget which guides the management in making necessary purchases to be made during the budget period is known as a purchase budget. Purchase budget is mainly concerned with the raw materials in case of a manufacturing concern. Now for example, there is a budget to be made wherein we are Firstly, investing onto a hotel property. Now, uh, the investors will make a plan, make a blood budget that, say for example, I will pay 50 lakhs for the land. I will pay 20 lakhs for the construction. Beyond this, I do not want to make any further investment. So, this is a planning this can like the 50 lakhs can go up to 51, 52 but not beyond that. The 50 lakhs can come down to 48, 47 but not beyond that. 
so that's a budget wherein i will not compromise on my quality but i will also take care of the quantity we come to budgeting production a production budget is a forecast of the production for the budget period it determines the quantity of the products to be produced so for example uh, we have a event of 50 packs i will make sure i do not overcook or i do not make i do not make a uh, you know food for more than 50 two or three people so that the food that i that is being prepared doesn't fall less but also i'll have to make sure that nothing goes into waste so the production budget is basically used by the production department wherein they can analyze and utilize situation and understand following the patterns of every other banquets wherein they can do a meal planning they can do a budgeting they can also stock up you know their raw materials fresh items and perishable items and use in a logical way use in a way that nothing goes into waste production cost budget determines the number of units to be produced when these units are converted into monetary terms it becomes a production cost similarly a material budget is concerned with the determining of the quality of raw materials required for the production and is called raw material budget very simple to understand nothing to explain much now let us understand when budgeting is done with functions you know according to overheads the budget which covers all expenses of all administrative officers and of management salaries is called administrative overhead budgets so uh, an organization will have to plan accordingly uh, they will have to segregate the salaries uh, you know of uh, confirmed staff or uh, you know staffs which are under uh, you know services wherein uh, they are going to work for only six months they have a you know contract so some of them are on contract basis so we'll have to uh, the HR department basically takes care of this they have to understand analyze how much uh, employment employers do we need how much employment do they need in a particular season and that way they can coordinate with all the other departments we will talk about selling and distribution overhead budgets the budget which estimates the expenses involved in selling and distribution of a product is known as a selling and distribution overhead budget again a very simple topic to understand nothing to explain further with a plant utilization budget, the budget is one which estimates the extent of a plant or a machinery to be used in the production process. And this one is called a plant utilization budget. Now we come on to capital budgeting. So capital budget projects budgeting which will take care of the funds that are allocated to various investments projects designed to ensure the profitability and growth we also have cash budget the budget which shows the cash requirements of a future period and is called the cash budget we'll move on to classification according to time now a long-term budget is a budget which is designed for a longer period say for example a 5 to 10 years program and thus it is called a long-term budget and such budget is usually prepared in physical units for the planning of the operation of the concerned team. Similarly, a short term budget will not ex exceed a time period of more than 5 years. Okay. Now, according to time, a current budget will cover a very short period that is a month or a quarter. And current budgets are prepared for a short period in accordance to the prevailing condition now to understand the approaches of budgeting let's talk about a past data based budgeting in this approach the current year or a past year budget 
budget is taken as a base for preparing the budget for the future. Adopting some additions and some deductions, the next year budget is prepared. And this is a traditional way of preparing budgets. We'll talk about a performance based budgeting. A performance budget is prepared for evaluation of an organization's performance in terms of its input and output or a cost and a result. Now this budget will estimate the total cost and activities and thus it will result in a performance. We also have a zero based budgeting called ZPB. And that's a comparatively newer concept in business. It was first time used in Texas Instruments of US in 1971. Later, it was applied by Georgia in 1973. Now, it's included in several countries, also India. With this, we finish our fifth section of approaches to budgeting. Moving on to our sixth section, like we had already discussed, we'll talk about the benefits of budgeting. So what it basically does is it helps an organization to achieve its goals. It can be a short term goal, it can be a long term goal, which is translated into specific plans and tasks also given to specific departments and department heads, providing a clear guideline to all the managers regarding of the current operation. Let us just talk in details about the benefits. It, in preparing budget, it provides an opportunity to review operations and res, revise if necessary. So suppose if there is a mistake and uh, while ongoing, uh, we find that there is a glitch. So we can mend it, we can fix that. So we do have that liberty. The performance of all the members, all the staff at all levels of the organization can be measured and evaluated against a newly accepted norm. Now we do agree if there are benefits, there will also be problems associated. So let us talk about now the problems associated with budgeting. The first point is that the variations require explanation and this may use managerial time inefficiency. And if this explanation do not, you know, formulate, then it will hinder the further performance of the organization. Controlling through budgets can only be exercised by and after the event. Comparison of actual and with the budgets may be of a little help as a guide to the current operation. So there isn't very major problems with this, but it requires a lot of patience as it requires a lot of you know thorough studying and thorough understanding and like i said this doesn't come in a day or two this will require years of practice and monitoring very minutely with this we end our sixth section which is benefits and also the problems associated with budgeting we'll move on to our seventh subsection shall talk about budgetary control in our seventh section. Now this refers to the principle, the procedures and the practices of accomplishing given objectives through budgets. Definitely this is provided by the general manager and the general manager may have uh, you know company heads, the investors, the um, owners of any hotel or any organization. They formulate, they give us, they, they give the like the property heads, the general manager, a budget. And the general manager now subdivides these into various department heads. The front office manager is given a budget for his department. The housekeeper is given a budget for his own department and so on and so forth. F and B head, also the production head. Now, uh, it can overall manage tool for the business planning and control. 
so there are budget committee there is a budget period and everything so uh, basically we'll have to understand this is a very uh, minute process and there are certain heads there are certain measures which has to be taken uh, a lot of control of and uh, you know budget can only happen if there is a coordination in every department there is an understanding there is proper knowledge so with this uh, students we finish our third unit budgeting this is not a very difficult chapter just that you'll have to understand the principle the procedures also the practices very carefully